Hey everyone, it's Mike, and we are back with a new playthrough series. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, at Play More Games, um, you'll have seen me playing the big uh, scenario uh, of this game. This is Stonewall Sword. This is the first game in Herman Luckman's uh, uh, Blind Swords. Um, system. Um, I will tell you, uh, I enjoyed this game uh, very much. Um, this is uh, published by Revolution Games. Um, I also have the Mets title and the Kernstown title, um, and you can expect to see playthroughs of those pretty shortly. Um, so before we jump into this one, <clears throat> Um, I just want to apologize for my absence recently, uh, holidays and uh, ever-changing uh, on a day-by-day -day basis work schedule um, due to pandemic-related releases has made it difficult uh, to film on a consistent basis. Um, so uh, I'm sorry for the erratic uploads, I'm going to try. Um, try to be better about it and maybe shoot uh, two or three in a row and just schedule them out. Um, I think that might be nice instead of uh, the process I currently have. Anyway, that's another here nor there. I'm doing well. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, and uh, let's get into it. So, um, as always, for the first time I play a game, um, first video, um, I'm going to go just a little bit slower. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to play the game, uh, unfortunately, but hopefully, um, you know, if you've played the game um, or read the rules, at least you'll get a decent idea of, um, of what's going on here. Um, that being said, this is just my second time playing through, um, so I am liable uh, to make some mistakes. Alright, so with that being said, um, basically this is a chip pull system. Um, you can see all of these formations are, there are formations called brigades in this game, which are part of higher, part of higher levels called divisions. So you can see that Prince, Yuri, and Green are all part of Augur's division. So when you pull Augur's chip, you choose which one of these, you assign it in order, you throw the chip back in the cup. Um, that's the game in a nutshell. There's some event chits, which lets you do cool stuff. You can hold them or play them. Um, there's a commander in chief chit, um, which is your overall commander, which gives you some important tactical flexibility. Um, Important to note in this game in particular, um, the Confederates do not start with their um, <clears throat> Commander in Chief chip um, because that was Stonewall Jackson, and uh, Jackson was having one of his um, one of his days. Um, so the scenario notes um, prepared by uh, Jeff Barry. Um, uh, suggest um, that it was, uh, you know, typical or, well, I mean, uh, not necessarily uh, typical, um, but, you know, one of the things that Jackson was kind of famous for was, you know, his fog or malaise or whatever you want to call it. Um, in any case, uh, he was not attentive um, in the role of an overall commander. Um, it could have been a heat. It was a very hot day. Um, so, uh, in any case, you get it about 6 o'clock, 6.20, he snaps out of it. Um, um, and then, then you have that chip. So, um, we cannot move south of row 29. The orientation is this is to the north, so anything in row 30 or below we cannot go into. Um, 
and just to go over victory conditions here, um, let's hide the units. Is that this one? Yeah. Okay. So these blue ones, um, the union scores victory points every turn for the blue ones. For the red ones, the Confederates score points at the end of the game only for. And then both sides score points for any units that end up on the broken track at the end of the game uh, based off their strength point value. Um, and then you just do a differential. Uh, positive number is a Union victory. Negative number is a Confederate victory. Um, tie is a draw. Um, and then there are different various levels of victory uh, based on the number margin. All right. So seven, uh, we start on turn seven, goes through turn 11. So it's a five turn scenario. Um, so let's start with the, let's start uh, with the scenario spe special rules. Um, so the union does a preliminary bombardment and they do one for each division. So for Garnet's division, we roll a die. So we get a three. Uh, so we flip one unit of that brigade or group to its battle-worn side. Um, and uh, pretty clear they're going to go for the high-value unit. Um, and then we do Talia Pharaoh. Six. So we flip two uh, from Talia Pharaoh. Um, and again, we're going to go with the... high strength point ones, and then we're going to go uh, early's brigade. Uh, so we just get one from early's. Actually, we're going to do a little bit different, and we're going to we're going to pop the five morale because the morale is is very important. Um, and then once more for the artillery as a group. So. We flip one artillery piece. I think they have a three, yeah. All right. Now we do the same for the Union artillery. Uh, and dang, they will flip three Union artillery pieces. All right, so all that's done. So let's prepare the cup. All right, so the CSA is going to choose their key chit. So basically there are seven event chits. Um, so each side gets to pick one and then four more go in for a total of five. So two will be left out. So the CSA is going to pick Rebel Yell. Um, the two sides won't know this, so we'll play and we'll do the best that we can. Um, USA is going to pick out Command Confusion. Alright. So we have two CSA events excluded, two USA events excluded, and then we refill our check cup so the check cup is ready to go. So then we go to artillery phase. So we start with the Union. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we are we're going to move that piece to here. Actually, we might as well go there. I'd like for it to be a little, little more higher up. Okay. So then let's fire with this stack. So we have a firepower of three. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So it's three. 
and it's at 7, which is at their normal range. It'll be shifted once for cornfield. Alright, uh, so they get a color dye 1, white DR5. I'm not sure what it's getting at of results of 15. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. It's doing that for us. Um, that's going to be a big old nothing. So we'll mark all of these as fired. Um, so we'll move those there. So four, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. We'll do the skirmish order unit. Ooh, so 55. So we start with a five, and we're shifted once for cornfield, and then once for uh, skirmish order. So they are a three. So 55 on the three. Um, and that will get us a break test. So they actually they do deplete, um, but they do not retreat. So it's kind of that's kind of good for them. All right. So now we'll mark these as fired. I'm moving them to higher elevations. Um, these two being here are kind of unfortunate because this higher elevation right in front of them. Um, and the line of sight rules, uh, that's like probably like the hardest part for me. So firing unit is at a lower level than the target unit. Um, Yeah, so firing unit is at a lower level than the target unit. So let's say we're at firing at a four and we're looking at firing at a five. If any intervening hex is the same level as the target unit, line of sight is blocked. If any intervening hex is the same level as the firing unit, are higher than the firing unit and lower than the target unit. Um, okay, so they can fire from there, um, but it would be obscured. Um, which I mean is not ideal, um, in my opinion. So we'll move there. So then lastly we have these three and we'll go one, two, three, four, 
Uh, actually, let's let's aim at these guys. All right, so we got a 52 on the three. Uh, shifted to two for the cornfield. Um, no joy. Alright, so that will let us finish moving these around. And uh, we will move our cavalry up, but uh, cavalry is kind of, eh, I don't want to say they're useless, but they're difficult to, to get right in this game, I think. Okay, so now all that is over, so we go to the activation phase, and in this, the Union may go first and automatically get a full activation and they will certainly do so so they are going to do attack orders for Crawford um, so here we go we're gonna go one two three four and then one two three uh, one two Three, and then we're going to go to here, so this will provoke disengagement fire. So 53, uh, that's going to be nothing. Um, actually, we're going to go here just so this unit remains supported. All right, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. All right. So now we can assault if we wish to. So we're going to assault with uh, the 46 PA and the 28 MY. And let's bring it in a little bit closer here so we can all see. All right. So here's the procedure. Here's the basic procedure. I'm not tagging in the Crawford group because then these guys could add half of their. Um, firepower and I think we're gonna get everything we need out of these two alone so um, first we do defensive fire and we're gonna focus on the Pennsylvanians so we'll roll those so 26 26 is not gonna cut it all right so now we do a close combat so We'll start by figuring out our base strength, which is going to be 10 plus 7, which is 17. Okay? Uh, we're outnumbering them greater than 3 to 1. So we'll get three shifts for that. We have a higher cohesion rating. Uh, so we'll get four shifts. So we're going to be rolling on the max table. Now, this unit is unsupported. Um, why? Even though it's next to other members of its division. Units and woods are always unsupported. This is a very important rule that I missed in my first playthrough for probably 45% of it. Um, and when you think about it, it makes sense. Because um, these are thick... I mean, the idea of support is deriving, uh, I think, uh, material and psychological support of knowing that your flanks are covered, right? But if you're in the woods, you know, things kind of get mixed up, it's rough terrain, 
maybe you can't see, you know, all the way. Uh, I'm not sure of the scale of each hex, um, but it makes, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, 140 yards, uh, so 420 feet. Um, so yeah, I mean, depending on how thick the woods are and how rough the terrain is, uh, change in elevation, yeah, you could certainly, in any case, um, they're firing on the max table. They're going to be a cohesion rating of two. So let's see what happens. Uh, wow, we rolled the same result twice in a row. It's kind of spooky. Uh, so 26, so that is going to be a medium test. And we use the close combat side as opposed to the fire side. All right, so they deplete and uh, let's see they route one now we can advance and we will okay so that is a pretty good activation so let's zoom back out. And let's pull our first chip. So we get Union Firefight. And you know what? Uh, we are just going to go ahead and play it right away. Um, and reason why is this unit we give it a good thumping we can send it right to the broken track um, they're going to be at a cohesion rating of zero um, so this has a pretty good chance of success so we'll roll it all right so 32 so we're starting at a seven shifted twice for woods uh, that'll put us at a four so 32 will be a light uh, test. Uh, so 46 is uh, going to be a morale hit and they route two spaces. One, one, two. Uh, so we don't quite route them off the board the way we wanted to, but um, Certainly we're kind of clearing up the space there. Okay. So Brigade Reserve Movement. Now for this, I will tell you so far that based on my estimation, things are breaking in the Union's direction for sure. Um, any one group of units, they're all from the same brigade and adjacent to each other, may move up to four MPs, um, but may not engage. Um, so we can go one, two, three, four. Or we could go one, two, three. Yeah, so let's go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fortunes of War. Um, so Fortunes of War. I get Fog of War and Fortunes of War mixed up. Um, Fortunes is the one where you roll on the table. Uh, oh no. The next shit pulled is negated. Uh, so yeah. That one does not get played. Union Fatigue. Okay, so Winder. Alright, so now, if you see, Winder has an activation rating of 3, which means we will roll to see whether Winder's brigades will get to do a limited or a full activation. 
All right, so it is exactly a three, so they will get to do a full activation. And we are going to do an attack order with Ronald. We want to get to this uh, here. One, two, three, four, 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 and four. Now we can do a close combat, but they would get the first shot at us, so I don't know if that's something that we want to do. Um, I would imagine probably not. Eh. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, one through three will attack. We'll do a close combat. Four, five, six, we won't. Alright, we won't. Alright, so now Winder has more uh, divisions in the board, so he goes back in the chit cup. Alright. Um, so then, we pull... Uh, oh, hold on. Let me just make sure. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, so. Hills marker should be in there. Yes. Okay. Should have checked that beforehand, but oh well. Alright, next up. Jackson's Rusty Sword. Uh, we cannot play that since the Jackson shit is not in play. Um, Okay, uh, let's see. So, Rebel Fatigue. That will go in the USA player's hand. Command Confusion. That will also go in their hand. Alright, so Hill. Um, so, let's roll for Hill. Uh, shucks. So, we are only going to get a limited activation with Hill. Um, So let's do let's do that. So we want to try and bring on the reinforcements to prevent uh, a log jam uh, for next turn. So that was unfortunate. So that goes back into the cup. We'll pull the next one. Fog of War. So we'll roll on the table. Uh, we get a two which is uncontrolled union withdrawal. Um, so let's see. Um, all right, so we are going to make this unit withdraw. So we get some morale hit and um, First we'll do disengagement fire, so we'll roll that. Uh, so 41, so it's a three shifted twice to one. 41, not gonna do it. Um, so good for them. All right, Winder. Um, again, not getting that full activation, so let's go. Let's do Garnet, and what we will do is we will do a fire combat, and we will fire on the 28th New York. Whew, boxcars. Alright, so. This, uh, so we are at a 5, and we are shifted 
twice four woods so that will be a three um, <laughs> and they are a three morale value so it will be an easy test um, so no deplete and they route one hex so they will um, they will route here which will force that unit to move out of there okay so then winder goes back in it's a lucky shot for them all right, uh, rebel fatigue. Okay, quick march might be useful. Rebel yell. Uh, do we want to play rebel yell? Yeah, let's do rebel yell. So we'll, we'll move up here. And we'll get defensive fire with the Wisconsinites. Uh, so that's not going to cut it. Uh, and then Rebel Yell. So they start at a 10. Um, they're outnumbering 3 to 1, so they get 3 shifts for that. They have a higher cohesion rating, so they get a 4th shift for that. And then they get 2 for the event shit, which is 6. So they will be firing on the max. So we'll roll them. So 33 on the max. That's going to be a medium test. So 32, they deplete and they route one. Uh, they will not advance since they do not want to get pulled out of formation. All right, Williams. Uh, so Williams, unfortunately, only gets the limited activation. So now we will leave him out. All right, so Banks, Banks will save. All right, Confederate firefight. Probably the best option here is the firefight does let you move one hex. Or no, it doesn't. Um, so we could, uh, let's see. They are rifles, so they would be firing at half. Um, uh, well, let's let's save it. Let's save it. Yule. All right. So we're gonna put Yule under maneuver, and uh, Union's gonna say, "Well, hold on now. We're gonna play Command Confusion." So now, instead of being under maneuver, they are under uh, defend. And on top of that, they're going to play rebel fatigue. So we'll roll to see if any of them flip. They do not. Um, so they have one movement point, is basically what it's going to come down to. Hill. All right. 
so we activate branch so we will bring them down and we are going to do a maneuver and we will play our second rebel fatigue so let's see if one of them breaks yes one of them breaks um, all the units are identical so we'll just pick the top one uh, so their MPs are halved so one two three one two one two three one uh, two and then we'll go there that way we're just getting them all on board okay auger four okay So let's go attack. We'll go one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then indeed we will do a close combat here. Um, and we are going to do these two units only so defensive fire will be issued against the 29th ohioans so they get a 34 so 4 34 is not going to cause a morale hit so they are at 11 and let's check out the terrain um, Hmm. One side is across a slope, but the other is not. Let's check it out. Hmm. Uh. Okay. I did uh I did this the uh I did the assaults wrong. Yeah, I did the assault wrong. Um so this will be our assaulting hex. This is a flanking hex. So it's six to four. So this does not add its strength points um, to anything except the odds modifier. So, uh, so 11 to four, we'll make it two to one, so we get two shifts for that. We have a greater cohesion rating than the enemy, so we'll get a third shift. So we'll go from six to seven to eight to nine to 10 to 11 to 12 to 13. And then we'll roll it. 12 to 13 and that's going to be a severe check we got the box cars <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, well. uh, let's see both deplete and then they route one. Okay. Here comes Winder. And that will be just a limited activation for Talia Pharaoh. Which means, unfortunately, they will be able to do nothing. 
All right, so Augur has the last two formations. Let's go. Um, so we'll burn green, and then we'll try to activate Prince. And we rolled a five again. So we'll burn Prince. Uh, then we will issue um, we'll issue a firefight uh, from this hex here uh, so 13 uh, that's not going to cut it um, they can return fire, but they're basically going to need uh, 63 to 66. No. So that goes back. This gets wasted. Alright, so then we have banks and banks. What are we going to do? We are going to maneuver with Gordon's division. We need to get those guys committed. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Uh, actually, we are just going to swap places there because I'd like to get the heavier ones there quicker. Not sure how you got here, uh, but we can definitely move you one, uh, one, two, three, uh, let's go one, two, or one, two, three, four. Yeah, that would overstack. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Best we can do. Okay. So that is turn seven in the books. Um, so we will move the marker to turn eight and we will let's see where is yes so the union scored two victory points since they have this hex here and that's it um so um you can see um the play as a chip pull is very dynamic and um can definitely create a lot of interesting results and changing gameplay. Uh, and I am very excited to keep playing. Um, so I will stop this video here, turn seven, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, this is Mike, and uh, have an excellent day.